Muscadetti, Sexy Beast, how we prepared the board. It's a four step process. First, we get the board, then we cut the board, we just set the board, and then we put the imprimatura on the board. Now guys, we can also be working with uh, cherry wood. Cherry wood is a hard wood. Essentially, just the wood matters. Uh, the harder the wood, the better. And uh, you also have clear wood. Clear wood essentially is a, a piece of wood that's cut right through the tree, so there's no glue or anything holding it together. They're normally about this wide or so, however long. Uh, but uh, these, these the ah, my we can see right here, it, this is about half an inch thick, which is what we want. I used to get the three quarter inch thick, uh, but uh, that was a little bit too thick. Right, that's what she said. And it was a little bit too heavy because as you can tell right here, these right here are giant boards, right? They're giant boards, big, so we can do giant masterpieces, right? So I find that the half uh, inch is, uh, is enough. It does suffice. Uh, it definitely is so stupid. Ah! So without further ado, let's go ahead and lift the board. We're gonna stand here, feet, shoulder width apart. Grab it, butt out. Dip down, it's all on the thighs, and we're gonna just lean the board up and lift it ever so slightly, and we're just gonna shuffle. Shuffle like a crab, <laughs> right? Now, it's important to note, there's no women with the strength because men are superior in every single way possible. We have the strength, and our brains are also much larger. So, with our man strength, we're using only strength that men, that men have, right? So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the board for so gracefully, I'm just gonna push it right up here, all right? I'm just gonna put it right there. As you can see, we got it. It's nice and secured, and that, my friends, is proper board lifting technique to your fat face. Now, one of the reasons why I prefer painting on wood over canvas is because it's frankly just more durable and it's going to bend and warp less over time. You see, my dear peasants, uh, the canvas absorbs a moisture out of the air and over time there's an expansion and contraction of, of said canvas. Uh, it's science, uh, men, and uh, that in turn uh, will crack, crack the oil paint, which in, uh, in fact does become a little bit more brittle over time. And so uh, painting on wood will prevent that to a greater degree. Don't be an idiot, okay? I think I've proven uh, myself to you guys countless times that, in fact, I am responsible enough to be handling such equipment. I am actually going to give you guys the most important advice that I can possibly give you. The advice essentially is... Crabs. But that was... To this day, they're still trying to find the penis. But he learned a very, very valuable lesson. One more thing to say. I just have one more thing. This is very important, and that is... That's the best advice that I can possibly give you peasants. After cutting the boards, I wiped the excess debris and sawdust off the boards with a rag and expertly set up my workstation in preparation for some hardcore man sweat in the form of delicately tickling the boards with the gesso. I bought these birchwood panels from Home Depot and they should last as long as they are properly sealed in the gesso process and kept away from the elements by being in a climate controlled area away from moisture. Oil grind tends to seal better than the water-based gesso, and if I wasn't the lazy bastard that I have morphed into, I would be using rabbit skin glue and oil grind to prepare my boards instead. Once we have everything cut, it is time to gesso, and here we have the blick, right? The blick right here, and this is very good. This is professional gesso. This is water-based. It, it comes pretty thick. I like to cut it down with water and put three coats on uh, the board and then sand it at the very end. But instead, what we're gonna use today is the cover stain primer right here. One of my viewers turned me on to this. I'm not sure of the long lasting effects, so just beware, it might yellow, I'm not sure. But so far, I've, I've used it on a couple pieces that works quite nice, so this is what we're gonna be using. It's nice and thick. So we are just going to be using one coat on the paint. I'm gonna put it uh, front, back, in the sides, yes, yes, yes. And in that manner, it's going to seal the wood in a way that will preserve it for all ages. 
so it can be admired by all. As we can see here, I have a very high-tech contraption uh, consisting of two fans on either side, right? Attached very securely with these bungee cables, right? And they are going to be drying uh, this in between speeds up the drying process. See? Man. Be sure to stir the gesso for a few minutes to make sure the clumps are out of it so you can apply it smoothly to the wooden panel. Unlike the Blick gesso where I apply three coats and then sand once it is dry, I only need to apply one coat of the sensor primer. I make sure to apply one even coat on the front, back, and sides. It normally takes about 20 minutes to dry with the fans. Now that they're dry, I brought them to my studio where I'm about to put the imprimatura on it. Like I said, at this point that we can go through and sand with a very fine grade sandpaper or what we can do too, if there's these little like gesso boogers right here that we see, we can just take our palette knife and just take it off just like this. And then we can sand it down just a little bit if we want. You know, this stuff doesn't really bother me too much. You can kind of scrape it down just a little bit and the oil paint's gonna cover most of it anyway. That's pretty flat. And there's a couple other pieces on here that I'll also uh, get rid of. But uh, now time to go to the imprimatura. For the imprimatura, I take some ivory black and just a touch of cadmium red and mix a large pile of paint. You can experiment with different colors to get the grind you wish to paint on top of. I add some walnut oil into the palette and then I take a large brush and mix the oil into the paint until the bristles are saturated and I have the right consistency of oil to paint. Once the imprimatura is ready, I use a large Princeton synthetic brush with a bit of spring to it. You can also use hog hair brushes, but keep in mind the texture you will see when you paint. I find the synthetics make a clean and smooth stroke on the birchwood panel when applied with a proper amount of mixture, though I do like seeing some texture even at this stage. If you want a lighter imprimatura, saturate the brush with more oil to the pigment. Make sure to put a nice even coat across the board. You can make the grind darker by adding more pigment if you want. Once I have all my boards done, I set the boards to dry, which normally takes about a week and a half to two weeks. If you want the boards to dry quicker, you can put a space heater on them, which could have them dry within a day or so. Now, if you want the imprimatura to dry just a little bit quicker, you can put some cobalt blue into the mix. As it is, it's only going to take about a week or two to dry. With that, Luis Gadetti out.